Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Kopi Janaballa Bha Giri Vardhari Kopi Janaballa Bha Giri Vardhari Yashora Nandana Padjana Randana Yashora Nandana Padjana Randana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Ah, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Mishnapad Paramahansa Paravijaka Charja Ashto Tarata Shri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Iskan B.B.T. Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Mishnapad Paramahansa Paravijaka Charja Ashto Tarata Shri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Ananda Koti Vaishnavinda Ki Jai Nama Acharya Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Shemad Bhagavad Gita ki jai, Samaveta Bhaktivinoda ki jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Sri Guru and Goranga. So, if any of you came last night and there was no class, I'm really sorry. I, I intended to announce that. There was a special program up in Encinitas that I went to. And also, I apologize to any online fans who tuned in. But uh, we'll try not to let that happen again. Okay. So, as far as I can tell, we're on text 11, page 197. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
On his 26th day of December 2023 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Chapter 4 entitled Transcendental Knowledge, Text 11, at the bottom of page 197. Ye, Yatha, yata, Mam, mam Prapadyante, Tangs, Tataiva, Bajami, Bajami, Aham, Aham Mama, Mama Vartmana Vartante, Manusya, Manusya Parta, Parta Sarvashaha, Ye Yatamam Papadyante, Tang Tatai Vabajam Yaham, Mama Vartmana Vartante, Manushyak Parta Sarvashaha Ye Yatha Maam Prabhadyante Thang Satai Vabhajamyaham Mama Vartmana Vartante Manushyak Parta Sarvashaha Ye Yatha Maam Prabhadyante Tang Satai Vabhajam Yaham Mama Vartman of Vartante Manushyak Parta Sarvishaha Okay, whoever was inspired to chant, go ahead. Yea, Taman Papadyante. Tang Satai Vabajam Yaham Mama Bartman of Artante Manushak Partasarvishaha Come on, Chris, you can do this one. Yea, Taman Propadiante. Tang Satai Vabajam Yaham Mama Bartman of Artante Manusha Parta Sarvashaha Okay, anyone online? Yea, Tamam Papadiante Yea, Tamam Papadiante Tang Satai Tataiva Bajam Yaham Tang Tataiva Bajam Yaham Mama Vartmanu Vartante Mama Vartmanu Vartante Manusha Parta Sarvasha Aha Manusha Parta Sarvasha That is Bhakta Chad who's <laughs> Hare Krishna Who has come down with a little mild COVID case I can say, right? Yes. Okay, yes. and hopefully you will, you'll be back uh, soon. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay, word by words. Ye all who yata as mam unto me papadyante surrender tan them tata so eva certainly bajami reward aham I mama my vartma path onuvartante follow manushyaha all men. Parta, O son of Pita, Sarvashaha in all respects. Translation. As all surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Pita. Purport. Everyone is searching for Krishna in the different aspects of his manifestations. Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is partially realized in his impersonal Brahma Jyoti effulgence and as the all-pervading Supersoul dwelling within everything, including the particles of atoms. But Krishna is fully realized only by his pure devotees. Consequently, Krishna is the object of everyone's realization, and thus anyone and everyone is satisfied according to one's dire desire to have him. Hare Krishna, welcome. If you need any more seats, feel free to pull them up or sit on the, on the benches if you like. We're on page 198 in the purport. In the transcendental world also, 
Krishna reciprocates with his pure devotees in the transcendental attitude, just as the devotee wants him. One devotee may want Krishna as supreme master, another as his personal friend, another as his son, and still another as his lover. Krishna rewards, rewards all the devotees equally according to their different intensities of love for him. In the material world, the same reciprocations of feelings are there, and they are equally exchanged by the Lord with the different types of worshippers. The pure devotees, both here, here and in the transcendental abode, associate with him in person and are able to render personal service to the Lord and thus derive transcendental bliss in his loving service. As for those who are impersonalists and who want to commit spiritual suicide by annihilating the individual existence of the living entity, Krishna helps also by absorbing them into his effulgence. Such impersonalists do not agree to accept the eternal, blissful personality of Godhead. Consequently, they cannot relish the bliss of transcendental personal service to the Lord, having extinguished their individuality. Some of them, who are not firmly situated even in the impersonal existence, return to this material field to exhibit their dormant desires for activities. They are not admitted into the spiritual planets, but they are again given a chance to act on the material planets. For those who are fruit of workers, the Lord awards the desired results of their prescribed duties. As the Yageshwara, the master of sacrifice. And those who are yogis seeking mystic powers are awarded such powers. In other words, everyone is dependent for success upon his mercy alone, and all kinds of spiritual processes are but different degrees of success on the same path. Unless, therefore, one comes to the highest perfection of Krishna consciousness, all attempts remain imperfect, as is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 2.3.10. Akama sarva kamo va moksha kam hudaradi tivrena bhakti yogena yajeta purushamparam. Whether one is without desire, the condition of the devotees, or is desirous of all fruit of results, or is after liberation, one should with all efforts try to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead for complete perfection, culminating in Krishna consciousness. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmidatam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisances unto him and to all members of Sri Parampara. So this is a very important verse in the Bhagavad Gita. They're all important, but this is especially uh, quoted and is, and is very uh, important for our efforts in becoming Krishna conscious. So, Yeyatampa, what is Krishna saying here? He's saying that I reciprocate exactly in the mood and to the degree, Haribo, Mark, welcome, and exactly in the mood and the degree that a living entity approaches me. In fact, the very word bhakti, you look it up in the Sanskrit dictionary, and you see that it involves reciprocation of love. It's an exchange. Bhakti is not just that uh, you're contemplating Krishna in a certain way, but it's, but it's the exchange of love, exchange of service also. Uh, so Krishna is saying, I reciprocate exactly as every living entity approaches me. Now we know that many living entities are completely in ignorance. Uh, many human beings, what to speak of cats, dogs, insects, and blades of grass. They're all living entities. And they don't know anything about Krishna. They've forgotten completely about God. But they know something in their own way about the material energy. They're living, the, uh, even the dogs and cats, right? They have their way of negotiating, getting their food and uh, safety and so forth. And everyone's got his own way of negotiating. Now, if you're <clears throat> completely absorbed in the material energy, as you're thinking it's your home and that you are the body, then your, your, your hopes for happiness and your hopes for security will be dashed ultimately. Because the very body that you're living in is very fragile. It's, it's, it's a, a very complicated machine made of the material elements and also the subtle material elements, mind, intelligence, ego. 
And uh, eventually, by the force of time or your karma or whatever, it's going to break down. It's going to become dysfunctional. And your, all your relationships and all of your hopes and whatever properties you have, and it's all going to be finished, right? Whether we're human beings or anything. So, but that's also Krishna. That this is material energy is is uh, Krishna's Krishna's material energy. He says in the uh, seventh chapter, "Bhumir apo anano vayu kangmano buddha devacha ahankara ityame binna pakatirashtada." What this means is that. These, these, uh, this material world, he divides it up into five gross elements and three subtle elements. These are all material. They're unconscious. Earth means solid matter. We're very familiar with it, right? Uh, liquids, water, tons of water, just a few blocks away. But there's also blood and there's also all kinds of liquids that go. And what is it? Fire's next. But I'm just saying the varieties of, of liquids. That, that, that's all apa. Anala, that's the fire, right? Every, every bit of fire that we experience in this world is ultimately coming from the sun. Just like this electricity that's now we're not enjoying with this light. Well, where does it come from? Somewhere they're burning some natural gas or something, right? Generating electricity, which is pumped here, and it produces the light. Well, what's the gas? The gas is coming ultimately from some decaying uh, plant that, that created the gas and they would bring it into, you know, whether it's coal or gas or oil or whatever it is. So that's all, all Krishna's energy. Earth, water, fire, and then air, right? Very important element. Without that, we can't live. Uh, ether. Now, ether, they're getting more and more subtle. Ether simply means the space that everything is occupying. That's another element, very subtle. Even more subtle is mind, Every one of us has a mind, but we can't see each other's mind, but we all know. I know you have a mind, you know I have a mind. And that mind is a very essential element of our life. Intelligence, the discriminating factor. This is the, the, the most important thing that distinguishes us from the animals. The animals also have these things. They have a rudimentary intelligence, sufficient so that they can get their necessities. And live. But they, they can understand this philosophy. Yeah. Of, of, Krish, of the Krishna book, you mean? Yeah. He, I literally just read it like yeah, yeah. Time, yes, yes. So, and the, fi and the final element is this ego, which is the interface between this, the spiritual world and the material world. It's everything that has to do with the ego, ego, what we identify with, who we think we are. Now, in our, in our conditioned state, we're identifying with the specific body that we have. But if you just contemplate a minute and you think, well, we've had all kinds of bodies. Isn't that one of Krishna's first instructions? Dehi nosmin yata dehe kaumaram yovanam jara tata dehantara prapti dhiras tattanamuyati. So in, in, in every, uh, each, each one of us has had a, a, a body that's much younger. Some of you, maybe you're not that old, but you can remember when you were six, right? A little bit, some of the things that happened. So, you, so you've changed, your body's changed, you're bigger now, you're more mature. You uh, know a lot of other things. And so your mind has changed, your body has changed, but you're the same person. So what is it that hasn't changed? The soul. The soul. The soul. <laughs> it's okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> the atma, the soul. That's the irreducible particle of consciousness that, that is really us. And, and, and the main uh, teaching of the, of the second chapter there is that that soul never dies. And that, therefore, we have had many bodies before, and we have many. So the process of transmigration is important, is, is another thing. And so later on in the 30th chapter, Krishna will, will give, uh, I think, 20 or 21 elements of knowledge. Welcome. We have uh, other books. Can, can you give him a book? Give him your book, and then you get one. Yeah, we're on page uh, 198. Hare Krishna. So the point is, is that this is, this is the, uh, the, the basic thing that we should strive for. We should understand the importance of it. Breaking this cycle of birth, growth, old age, disease, death, rebirth. Samsara chakra. We've been on this cycle for who knows how many millions of years. Different forms of bodies. And now each of us is in a human body. 
this is a very rare and important uh, 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 situation we're in now. Because only in the human form can we inquire into these ultimate questions. The question is, who, you know, the Sanatana Goswami, the, the, the prime disciple, uh, the first disciple of Lord Chaitanya, he gave us a model of how, what question to ask of, this, of the preceptor, the spiritual master, realized soul. Who am I? Why am I suffering? See, and how can, I, how can I end that suffering? You know, this is a basic question. And so Lord Chaitanya gave this immortal answer that's practically the basis of the whole Hare Krishna movement. Jiva. Jiva is the, is the minuscule, infinitesimal particle of consciousness that is us. That's called the Jiva soul, the Atma. So he says like this, Jivera Swarupoi Krishnera Nityadas Krishnera Tatasta Shakti Veda Ved Prakash so it's very, very simple, and you just analyze it. Jiva, uh, the, the, the uh, swarup, the actual ultimate nature of every living entity in any form of body, is to be a, an eternal servant of Krishna. We've forgotten that. We're still servants, but we're not serving Krishna. We're serving the body. We're serving our mind. We're serving our material desires, our fears, our anxieties. You know, we're serving our boss, we're serving our wife, serving our husband, we're serving. So we're going to serve. But, the, uh, but to be f completely fulfilled and perfect in our life, we need to, to transfer that service attitude to Krishna, to God. So he says, Jivara Sodapo, Krishna Nitya Das, eternal servant. And then this very important next line, Krishna Tatasta Shakti. Does anyone know what that Tatasta means? Tatasta, but, you know, everyone knows the word Shakti, and I'm sure it's an English word. You said? Shakti means energy. Energy, yeah. So it's a type of energy, and tata is the, is the, is the margin. We're, 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 we're three blocks, four blocks from the ocean. Everyone's been to the ocean, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't be in San Diego. So you're in the ocean. You see the ocean. And, the, and you have the waves coming in and then going out. There's a certain part of that beach that's covered and uncovered, covered and uncovered, right? It moves because of the tides coming in there. But it's always there. That tatasta, that's us means we're marginal. We can choose, we have chosen, to become absorbed in the material energy and forget Krishna. Unfortunately, that's our, because we have free will. Minute free will, but because we're particles of Krishna, we have his qualities on minute degree. So we have that freedom to ignore Krishna and try to enjoy the material energy. And we've, exe we've, we've exercised that free will, and here we are. Since time immemorial, we don't know how many births of Brahma could be billions and billions of years. We've been different bodies and, 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 and different families and different species and everything. And now here we are, you know, trying to understand the, the, uh, the essence of the whole thing so that we can break this cycle and go back to Godhead, back, back home, back to Godhead. So Krishna Tatasta Shakti, and then Beta Beta Prakash. Now this is a wonderful aspect of Lord Chaitanya's preaching, the philosophy. Achintya Beta Beta Tattva. Does that, does that phrase ring a bell with anyone? What does it mean, Mark? <laughs> That's a way of explaining it, yeah. In other words, inco inconceivably, the first word is ichintya. Uh, inconceivably, one with and different from everything. Krishna is one with and different from everything. Now, how is he one with it? This is all his energy. We are part of his energy. We're, we're the marginal energy. And then there are those lower energies. And there's a whole bunch of higher energies that we don't even experience here. The spiritual energies. Ladini Shakti. The, 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 spirit, the, uh, the pleasure potency in the spiritual world. Personified by whom? Ladini Shakti? Radharani. Srimati Radharani. Yes, she's the, she's the internal pleasure potency who gives Krishna the most pleasure. You see? And we can become servants of Radharani and also give Krishna pleasure. That's, you know. Or we can become servants of others, other of his servants. That's the ideal. But the perfection of our existence is to return to that uh, consciousness and that activity in which we're completely focused on giving Krishna pleasure. Now, the, the immediate thing that the false ego says is, well, what about me? Where's my pleasure? <laughs> and the answer is... <laughs> That because we're part and parcel of Krishna, that when we give him pleasure, we automatically feel pleasure. And we have, a, we have a reflection of that in this world. 
real love, the, the most pure kind of love is a selfless love. A mother for the child, little baby. You see? The mother is just doing everything in her power to make the child feel comfortable, well-fed, secure, and that way happy. You see? And if that child is, is you know, sleeping nicely or he's getting up and he's giving a little smile, maybe it's a point has no teeth. You probably went through this with all the kids. And, uh, but, but tries to smile at the mother. That the mother's day is made, isn't it? <laughs> it's not that you say, well, what else can you show me? No, that's enough. You know? <laughs> the love means that you take pleasure in the, uh, the beloved's pleasure. That's what true love means. And the perfection of, of Krishna consciousness is exactly that. There's a, there's a verse, many of you are familiar with Nectar of Devotion, book that Prabhupada wrote, maybe not. This is a, this is a book, a translation of, of a classic book on the process and the goal and the experience of bhakti. It's kind of like a, a, a rule book, a law book for, for Gaudiya Vaishnavs. It's uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, written by Srila Rupa Goswami, the younger brother of Sanatana Goswami. Both of them are extremely erudite um, scholars, and they played a very key role in the expansion of what we have as a Christian consciousness movement. So in that Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which means the, 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 the nectar ocean of Bhakti Rasa, of experiencing that loving relationship with Krishna, that's, that's what the, the title means, Near the beginning, he describes, well, what's the real goal of this whole process? Because you want to know that if you're going to really engage in the sadhana, right? So he says, he says like this, Anyabhilashita shunyam jnana karma jnavratam anukulena krishnanushilanam bhaktiruttama. Now, bhaktiruttama means the supreme bhakti, prema bhakti. This is what we're, we're aiming for. Nothing material. We're actually, we're aiming for uh, a state of being, which is we're saturated with this feeling of ecstatic bliss due to always being in the mood of serving Krishna and, and giving him enjoyment. And he's reciprocating with us. So he defines it this way, and this is what this, this verse means. Uh, anya abhilashita shunyam. Shunyam means void of, just like we, in the prayer to Prabhupada, you know. Shun, shunya vadi. So devoid of what? Other desires. Anya abhilashita shunyam. Other desires such as what? Then he gives a sample in the next line. Jnana, karma, jnavratam. Now, avratam means obscured or, or covered. So he says, your activities, your desire, not covered or obscured by any of these other motivations. And these are standard things. Jnana means uh, desire for liberation. It's knowledge. You know, just, just through pursuing knowledge of who I am, I'm pure spirit, I'll merge into the Brahma Jyoti and I'll be free, finally, from birth and old age, disease and death. But, that, but there's no activity. You don't have a form. There's no Krishna. There's no bhakti. It's just that your freedom from birth and death. Ultimately, that's not fulfilling for the soul. Because we're as much persons as Krishna is. We're eternal persons. And it's artificial for us to simply be in a state of consciousness with no activity, no senses, no nothing. So, so devoid of that. In other words, just a desire to be liberated, that's not your pure state, you know. So jnana, karma. Now karma has to do basically with all of the type of things that people desire in this material world. Material sense gratification of all kinds, uh, fame, uh, all these material things. That's also uh, a covering on bhakti. It can, be, it can be tainted with that. I want to be, I, you know, I've been sitting on this seat doing this, this class now three days a week for 40 years, almost 40 years, since 89 maybe 30, 34 years. And uh, I said, well, you know, I've got quite a status here. You know, I've been... <laughs> that's, that's spoiling my bhakti. <laughs> I, you, 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 the pr false pride is like the, the real disease of the, in, in the material life. To, to be proud of your position, in the material position. It's so fragile, it's so temporary. It's bestowed by Krishna, you know? And you're thinking, well, I'm so great and I'm so powerful. That, is, that, is, that false pride immediately cuts off your awareness of, of, of transcendence. The, the, the ideal is Trinata Pisuni Chena. These words, I don't know if these, these, these uh, verses ring a bell. Hare Krishna, welcome. Yes, we're going to have darshan at 8.15. 8.15? Yes. So we have to wait outside? You don't have to wait outside. You can come in here and sit on the bench and listen to me. <laughs> okay, I'm coming. Okay. So... Um, Lord Chaitanya is, this is Shikshastika. Shikshastika means eight verses of instruction on the holy name. 
based on the chanting of the holy name. And, it, and these verses were not written as, a, as an ashtaka, meaning that Lord Chaitanya didn't sit down and write eight verses like that. He wrote them, but they were in different times, different places. They were collected and put into this order by Krishna's Kaviraj at the end of the Chaitanya Charitamrita, and it's come down to us that way. So this is the third verse. And Lord Chaitanya, he gives it the first verse, which I, maybe I'll give it later, because I usually do one poem. And I put this first verse into a poem. I don't know how familiar you are with the Shikshastika, but the <coughs> first verse describes the glories of chanting Hare Krishna, all the benefits. But then, he, then Lord Chaitanya takes a role. This is a type of prayer. He says, Nam nam akadi bahodane jasarva shaktis tatra pitani amitak smarane nakala eta dushita bakripa bhagavan mamapi dur daivami dushamihajani nani raga. So he's taking a role of someone who has no taste for the holy name. This is Krishna himself, you know, as Lord Chaitanya. But he's teaching us how to pray. So it means this, I put it into a little poem, Krishna, Govinda, and Keshava too, your names have no end, and in each of them you have invested your potencies, leaving none out. Whenever we want, we can chant it without the slightest restriction of time or of place. O oh Lord, who can fathom your infinite grace? But I am so wretched, devoid of all shame, that I haven't developed a taste for your name. So this is what we should, we should be eager to get, a taste for the name, you know. So how do you get it? That's the next verse. Trina rapi sunichena, toro rapi sahishnuna, amanina manadena, kirtaniyak sadaharihi. You know, yeah, this is, uh, Krishna's Kaviraj said we should string this, word, this verse around our neck. In other words, always remember it. Try to enter into it and chant Hare Krishna in this mood. So here's the mood. More humble than a blade of grass, more tolerant than a tree, to think all praise belongs to others, none belongs to me. Such qualities attract the Lord to bless one with the power to chant his name incessantly until the final hour. Because that's really what we're looking for, to be able to chant Krishna, Krishna, when we leave this body, remember him and go back to God. It's all the, the our most prominent thought when we leave this body. That's the final exam in this life. So just see the opposite. In other words, in, in this doggy, doggy dog world, you know, the, the, you know comp competitive world, this is not the attitude. More humble than a blade of grass. No, you got to be, you know, punching your way up the up the scale, getting a raise, you know, more more uh, position, and just the opposite. Be very very humble. This is the attitude we should chant with. Uh, tolerant. More tolerant than a tree. This ma the material energy means that there's going to be disasters, there's going to be pains, there's going to be, you know, just like our, our friend Chad here. You know, he's, he's coming every morning and, and participating in uh, the Bangalartik and chanting nicely, going out on book distribution. Then somehow or other, he came down with, uh, a, fortunately, a mild case of, of COVID. So he's at home now. I think he's in Nebraska. If I'm not, you, can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Chad. And uh, so he'll be back. You know, this is the material world. So, uh, you know, I say, well, I got I to, gotta, you know, make a lot of money so I can, you know, get protection from all this. And, you know, no, we have to simply uh, feel uh, very humble and tolerant of all of these things and pray to Krishna and, and take shelter of Krishna. And then what about the fame? Give it all to others. You know, amanina, manadena. You don't want any false name and fame. You just want to be uh, at Krishna's lotus feet and take shelter you know, of, of his service. And then what's the, what's the result of this of chanting? Kirtaniya sadahari. You can always remember the name of Krishna. Then you're home free. That's the perfection, to be always remembering Krishna's name, form, qualities, pastimes like this, and acting for him. So this is a very key verse and attitude. And there's, there's, by the way, there's books... I can share. I think I have them uh, on, on, in uh, digital form. I can share with you. Bhakti Vinod Thakur wrote a uh, commentary on the Shikshastika. Hari Nam Chintamani, a book by uh, Bhakti Vinod Thakur that recounts Haridas Thakur's teachings on the, on the holy name. Yeah, I, I learned recently that he actually uh, did research and he found out people were taking notes when Haridas was talking, and that's come down to us, and he's confident in that name. So there's all kinds of ways, but, the, but, but the, the whole point is this holy name of Krishna is non different from Krishna. When we chant it, we're actually associating with the Divine Lord. And that's why it's so powerful. It can transform your, your, your heart, your consciousness. So, Krishna, so back to our verse now. Krishna responds to all this. Uh, just to finish up the Nabilashita Shunyam. So uh, 
not covered by any other desires, such as desire for liberation or some material desire or some desire for some powerful siddhis. You know, no, no. The only desire, anukulyena krishna anushilanam, to behave in such a way, to act in such a way that your motive is somehow to please Krishna. Just like you're sitting here listening to the Bhagavad Gita, there's a million, billion other things you could be doing. That's pleasing the Krishna. You see? You're, 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 at, at whatever level you're at, you're, at least we're, we're associating with Srila Prabhupada by reading his wonderful translation and commentary. And the, 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 obviously, if you, you know, Akama Savakoma, he's quoting this verse that he quotes here, is, is a verse in the second canto. And there's a whole list before this verse. Of, of demigods and goddesses you can worship if you want this, if you want that. You know, if you want to have a powerful body, you know, then worship Indra. You want to have health, worship Surya, the sun god. If you want a beautiful wife, worship Uma. There's a, lot, there's a whole shopping list, you know. And then, but then he says at the end, <laughs> but whether you are free of, of desires or full of all kinds of desires, if you are Odara D, if you're really intelligent, you will worship uh, Purushampuram, the Supreme Person, Krishna, with intense bhakti. Not just superficial, but this word tivrena means with all your mind and heart. He reciprocates proportionally. That's the whole means. If you're sincere, he sees that, he understands the sincerity. He's in your heart. And he says, okay, let me give this person a little more inspiration to, to go on and read the book and chant and associate like that. He's reciprocating exactly. He, he, has, he can wait for millions of years. He's already, you're, millions of births we've already expected. But he, but he, but he wants us back. He, we are all his children. We are all the children of God. He, he, can, he claims it. Sarbayonish, what is it? Sarbayonish Shakunti Amurti Eksam Babunda Yatasam Brahma Mahayoni Aham Bija Pradakpita. I am the seed giving father of every living entity. So now we as human beings, we have a chance to actually return back to the spiritual world. There's a beautiful book called the Brihad Bhagavatamrita that's, that's available. It's translated, written by Sanatana Goswami, translated by my old friend Gopi Puranadana Prabhu, who is a Sanskrit scholar. We worked together on the completion of the Bhagavatam. I worked for the BBT all these years. And in there, there's, this, there's two parts. So one of the parts is this uh, sadaka, this, this uh, bhakta, who is going here and going there. And eventually he goes up back to Goloka. And he's in his original form. And Krishna's coming back from the forest with the cows and all his friends. And he sees his old friend. You know, he's returned to Godhead. Oh, he says, oh, there's Sarup, Sarup, my old friend. And he goes and he runs and he embraces him and he faints. Krishna faints. He falls on the floor. <laughs> and the gopis come, what have you done to Krishna? You know, he's, he's well, I, oh, I'm sorry. But that, it's, it's a, the famous scene and a beautiful painting of that. But Krishna is welcoming his old, you know, long, long gone friend back to Goloka Vrindavan. And we all have a place there, somewhere in Krishna's Leela. So, we, we, so this is uh, turning our attention to Krishna. That's what uh, chanting the Hare Krishna means. It's the most powerful mantra. And the mood here is that whether, whether, you know, whatever situation that you're in, perform intense bhakti to, to, to Krishna and you'll soon come to the conclusion. You'll soon be, be motivated to uh, give up all the material motivations and actually work to discover your actual relation with Krishna and live in that relationship. And that'll be per our perfection. So, I've kind of gone on a long time. Are there any dis discussions or questions on these points? Bhakta Chad, you still there? He's there. He's just resting. <laughs> okay. Yes, go ahead, Prabhu. Well, it, 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 in this age, at this time, Srila Prabhupada has an essential role to play, a very essential role to play. And that is that he has given these books. And in these books, he gives us the, the absolute truth in a way that we can understand. It's not always so easy, but first of all, it's in our language. You know, <laughs> working on these books, I realize how important that is. From the English, it's been translated into 50, 60, 70 languages. If he didn't do the English, it, you know, which is, was the internet language, you know, it's the most... So that's a, that's a great gift. And Prabhupada is given in such a way and works so hard to establish this movement. So we have places like this 
where you know we're going to see the beautiful deities and setting all this up and, and working to, to, to establish it. So uh, it, it's, I, I'm not going to say that this is the only way. You know, I mean, you can go to India. You, there, there are other bona fide uh, representatives of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, for, for sure. But for us now, here at this time, this is the most practical and most efficacious way to advance. And we can do it at our own speed. But the, the, the essential point is to, to uh, adopt the practice of chanting the holy name into your life. I remember when I started, I wasn't really only associated with devotees. I was going, doing yoga. I, 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 I was, got fairly deeply involved with the Ramakrishna mission. I don't know if that rings a bell. <laughs> But they, they, because I'm in the New York area, they had a very big building and they're established there. Uh, but, I, but, I, but I think that the fact that I was attracted to this mantra, which I, 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 I don't think I even got it first from, from the Hare Krishna movement, uh, that helped me, you know, when I came across the books and some devotees to become attracted to visit the temple there. And, uh, and I got the Krishna book. Now, the Krishna book at the time, you know, because of all the Leela and everything, I wasn't so much ready for that. It was a bit too much for me, the deities. You know, I was meditating and doing all this stuff. But um, when I got the teachings of Lord Chaitanya, I was very philosophically inclined. And it all just made so much sense to me that eventually I, I was just chatting, chatting, chatting. And, I, you know, what happens is, is that all your material things that you're trying to take shelter of, Krishna takes a hand in there and he kind of wrecks them, you know, so that you're... <laughs> Oh, I, you know, I didn't have my job anymore. It's a long story. I lost it. And uh, I might as well join the temple. You know? So I was very fortunate. I didn't have a family. I didn't have a lot of attachment on the outside. So I was fortunate. I was, still, I, was much, I was older than most people who joined at that time. I was 25. And most were joining around 18, 19, 20, 21. You know? But I was fortunate to join at that time at that temple because they were producing the books. And I was uh, growing up in a family where my mother was a teacher, my father was, you know, he wasn't a professor, but he, uh, and, and so I was pretty good at English, and I was able to help in the book production, and I was able to do that, you know, uh, up until this time. That was, I was enjoyed in 73, so it's been over 50 years now. Um, but the, the point is, is that uh, if we are sincere, if we, if we read the books and we try chanting, and we try to associate with devotees, then the desire to become more Krishna conscious will, will naturally grow in us. And you'll see that, that uh, the more that you do service and the more that you, 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 you uh, try to live according to the tenets of the philosophy, then Krishna will give you so much mercy. He'll, he'll make it easier. He'll make it easier. That, that thing that you were trying to give up, I just couldn't give up after a certain time. Oh, now I really don't want it anymore. You know, this is a, this is a very important part. Uh, in the second chapter, we have this verse. I'm telling you, this verse for every devotee who's in the movement. When you read this verse, it says, "Yeah, that's why I'm here." Which means vishaya, the object of the senses. So he's describing something that everyone, you know, a lot of people are trying to do: give up something that's damaging them, some addiction. You know. So if you, if you, you, know, you, you take a, a vow, you take a, you're determined, I'm going to give this up because it's harmful. So you're able to do that. It really means not consuming. I'm not going to consume this, that. It doesn't literally mean you have to be eating something or drinking, but that's the idea. Uh, so you can do that, but the, the, the desire is still in there. And if you get in the right atmosphere, boom, you you know, fall off the wagon, you know. It's clear. So, nirahasidehi, but rasa bhajam rasa bhyasa param dhishtana bhartate, if you can see, which means directly experience the param with the Supreme Lord, then, and, and, you, and you, you, you experience the pleasure of Krishna consciousness, tasting the name, then the desire for that can go. And there's no more danger, as long as you're intensely practicing. So that's, that's what Krishna consciousness is. Is to come to a certain level that you can handle in your present circumstance, you know, a certain number of rounds and, you know, try really hard to come, you know, the four regular principles. And then your, Krishna will reciprocate. That's what this whole verse was that we read. As they approach me, I approach them. So if we really try to surrender and we pray, prayer is very important, 
then Krishna will simply give you the strength to practice more and give up things that are in, that are in the way. And you'll see, yeah, this is really substantial, that it's real. And that, that you know, Krishna gives you a, a taste so that you, okay, I'm going to chant some more rounds. No more two, I'm moving up to four. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, you know, <laughs> whatever it may be. <laughs> Noah. It can be, yes, for sure, because there's all these levels. Actually, when, we, when we're chanting, you know, if we're truly trying to, to concentrate and we're you know, that, that's the form of surrender. You know, we're not thinking of anything else. We're bringing the mind away from that and we're trying to hear the name and, you know, really be serious. So all of that is part of surrendering. But, the, but the, you know, the surrendering, there's, there's no end to it because ultimately Krishna wants everything, you know, and he's ready to give himself totally to someone like that. But, but as, as, you know, we can pace ourselves and see what we can accept, but that's, it's progressive. But it, it's, it's certainly a fact that if you progressively surrender to Krishna, you take another step, okay, I'm not going to do this anymore. I know this is not in the program. And you, and you chant Krishna, the Hare Krishna and you pray, please give me the strength to do it, and you're able to do it, that's very encouraging. Because you know? usually what happens, then you have more time to do your Krishna conscious stuff because you're not doing that stuff anymore, whatever it may be. So yes, it, this this surrendering is is, uh, is is you know a basic principle in Krishna consciousness, and it's often I don't want to say symbolized, but a, a, a very important step in that is like bowing down, you know, when we bow down, and that, if you do that, then that's you're making advancement, you know, if you actually do that, and then when you understand the meaning of it, because this is a very big thing. Uh, okay, we have time. My old friend, I mentioned him, Gopi Pranadana Prabhu, he, he's a Sanskrit scholar. He translated several books. One of them is by uh, uh, Sanatana Goswami called Krishna Leela Stava. And it's a summary of Krishna's Vrindavan Leela leading up to Krishna leaving Vrindavan. And woven into it are obeisances. There'll be these simple Sanskrit verses and then namo, namo, namo. Uh, so, so this the nama, this bowing down, is is integral part of the book. So, in the beginning of the book, he gives a little introduction and he quotes from the Padma Purana, I think it is, explaining the deep meaning of bowing down. So, first of all, the different levels of bowing down. I don't know if you've, if anyone has have ridden on the Indian Airlines. So, I mean, you get on the airlines and this, this I still call them stewardesses. I think they. Uh, the, namaste, namaste, you know, so that's, so that's like the, 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 that's like the least serious type of n- n- namaha, right? But when we bow down, that, that's uh, literally physically bowing down, that's also different levels. If you're bowing down and you're, you're you know, the ladies don't do the, the full bowing down. So that, men can also do that, just on your knees and your shoulders, you know. So that's another level, but the full level is the whole body, this dandavat. You see? Eight parts of your body touching the ground. And the internal meaning of nama, it means not mine. This body is not mine, oh, Srila Prabhupada. You, it's yours. You know, I'll, I'll, whatever I do, I'm going to do in your service. Or to Krishna. You know, he's Rishikesh. He's the owner of our senses. Therefore, whatever we do should be for his pleasure. This is not his hand, my hand, it's his hand. So the hand should do things that are pleasing to Krishna. So that's, that's uh, you know, bowing down, especially with the understanding, that's, that's a, a, a big step forward. So all these, these things, and the most you know, important element of this is association, to, to, to hang out with the devotees and uh, you know, have your friendships and your relationships, at least some of them, with devotees. That helps you know, to kind of orient yourself to being in a devotional community. Because after all, what does it mean to go back to God in? You're going to be with the devotees all the time, so <laughs> you better get used to it. <laughs> all right, we have a little time. I'm going to give a, a poem or two. So this Shikshastika verse, very important. This is like the foundation of the whole movement. You know, Lord Chaitanya writes, Cheto da panam arjanam bhava mahada vagni nevapanam shreya kaidu bhachandika patadanam vidya bhadu jivanam anandam bhadivardhanam bhadipadam purnamita swadanam sarvatmasna param param vijayate shri krishna sankirtanam 
All glory to the chanting of Sri Krishna's holy names, which easily extinguishes samsara's blazing flames by polishing the lust-encrusted mirror of the heart. That chanting is the waxing moon that knows the secret art of causing the white lotus of good fortune to unfurl its petals far and wide throughout this bleak and blighted world. Of transcendental knowledge, which will take us to life's goal, the chanting of the name of Krishna is the life and soul. The ocean of ecstatic bliss floods far beyond its bounds wherever Krishna's merciful and mystic name resounds. Indeed, whenever Krishna's names are sung in congregation, at every step one tastes a joy that knows no limitation. So here with great attention, as I earnestly request, please chant your Krishna's holy names and be supremely blessed. The soothing nectar of the name will bathe your consciousness, bestow pure love for Krishna, and eradicate distress. Hare Krishna. And Hare Bol. Hare Bol, Chad. Okay. You Thank can you. Next time we hear you, you memorize that. And then we'll hear you chant it next time, okay? I would love to. Okay. So. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> and here's one more from the Krishna Karnamrita. It also has somewhat about the holy name on it. Krishna Karnamrita is a whole story behind it. I don't have time to tell it. But uh, the, the, the very title of the book, that someone can write a book. He was blind at this point. He was writing this book. And it's called Nectar for Krishna's Ears, Karnamrita. That's pretty bold to say, I'm writing a book that's Nectar for Krishna's <laughs> But he's, Krishna's right there. He's like writing with him. And he says, yeah, very nice. You know, so he's experiencing that. He can write like that. Bhuva Mangal Thakur. So near the end of his book, he has this verse, a beautiful verse. Jaya, 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 Deva, 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 Chibabana Mangala, Divinama, Deva. Jaya, 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 Deva, Krishna, Deva, Shavana Manona, Yanama, Tabatara. Oh, glory, 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 Lord, oh, glory unto thee, who with thy holy name bless all three worlds and set them free. O oh, glory, glory, glory unto thee, O Krishna Dave, whose nectar floods our ears and eyes and hearts in endless waves. Go Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. <laughs> now, isn't that a wonderful language, that Sanskrit? I mean, that, you, you, that's why it's called Sanskrit. Sanskrit means perfectly composed language. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what that means, but that's a line from <laughs> a song Rupa Goswami wrote. And uh, this, you can do things in Sanskrit that you can't imagine doing in English. So if you want my poetry, you write to Dravida108 at Gmail. I'll send you the whole list of poems I have. I have Sikshastaka and many others, all for free. And if you really want to, uh, 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 you know, be shocked, you go into YouTube and you, you key in Dravida space Mayapur. This is 19 years ago in Mayapur. I did the Shikshastika. And on the left side here, you know, Vyasaki? Anything ring a bell? Indra? Does that name ring a bell? He was behind me. Radhanath Swami? He was there. And uh, Satyanandan Swami? They were all there. And, and they, I didn't plan it this way. Believe me, they requested, you have to do it. You have to do it. Okay, okay. And so I did the Shikshastika in Mayapur. <laughs> Check it out on YouTube. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hari Hari Bhu.